Well there, welcome to Mind Boggles, a show that I hope you'll enjoy. It should be provocative, interesting, and hopefully uh, you might phone in sometime and say you're going to be late to work because your mind's boggled. But enjoy the show. Today we're going to talk about three ways to calm the mind. Some of you may notice that uh, your mind occasionally kind of gets out in front of you or causes trouble when you're trying to uh, get some extra sleep or you're angry or upset. Uh, it's easy to be angry, but it takes some skill to be calm and peaceful. We're going to talk about those skills today. But while you're listening, you might first of all just relax your body, relax your toes and your feet, relax your jaw, and then slow your breathing for a while just to relax a little bit and enjoy the show. Uh, three ways to calm the mind is what we're going to talk about. But before we do that, there is a story out of ancient India that you might enjoy of the magic genie. There's a man who's out in his field and he's hoeing and hoeing. It's about 110 degrees and it's hot. And he's working out there and he rem remembers a story that he heard earlier about a man in a neighboring village who had a magic genie. And he said, boy, I wish I had a magic genie. And the days and weeks went by and he's out there in his field working hard. One day he can't stand it. He throws his hoe down, he runs through the forest, finds this guy with the magic genie. He says, I need the magic genie. I, I got a lot of work to do. I, I, I want this genie. And the man who had the genie said, oh, no, no, you don't want this genie. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No. He argued. Finally, he said, okay, I'll tell you what. I will give you the genie, but here's the deal. You've got to keep him working or he'll eat you. So, Not a problem. I got all kinds of work to do for this genie. Okay, so I hand him the bottle. The man runs back across the the village and he finds his little spot by his land and he says, all right, okay, opens the bottle, out comes a genie. The genie says, give me work or I'll eat you, no problem. I want this field completely hoed and planted. The genie goes, done, give me work, or I'll eat you. The man says, oh goodness, I didn't, uh, well, I want a palace and plates of gold and servants. The genie goes, Done. Give me work or I'll eat you. He says, oh my goodness. Uh, the man realizes he's in trouble. Now as he runs down to the river where he knows it's a holy man, he says, master, you got to help me because this genie is going to eat me if I don't give him some work. And the, the master turns around, gives him curly hair, says, here, have him keep it straight. So he takes the curly hair. About that time, the genie comes up behind him and says, give me work or I'll eat you. He says, here, keep this curly hair straight. The genie goes boing, boing, boing. And while he's trying to keep the hair straight, the man turns around to the master to hear the rest of the teaching, which is when your mind gets out of control, have him keep the hair straight. And then when you need him to do work, put the hair down, work, and then pick up the hair again so the genie won't eat you. Well, of course, the genie is our own mind. If we don't give it something to do, it will gobble us up. As we go through some of these lessons and teachings and the stories and things, you might keep in mind the possibility that you are not your mind. You have one, but maybe there's something else going on. Uh, maybe there's a manual you can learn how to use your mind more skillfully, more gracefully. For example, you're at a hotel and you're trying to get some sleep, you got three or four hours before you got to get up to do a meeting and your mind just swirling, you know, keeping you awake. Who is it that's trying to go to sleep and who is it that's swirling, right? It seems like there's a separation. Well, if you can focus on the idea that I have a mind and sometimes I need some skills to control it, this magic genie can really get me in trouble. So let me see if I can control it somewhere and somehow so I can get some sleep. For example, with some insomnia, usually your mind is, you're talking to yourself about how you're talking faster and faster. Sometimes you talk to yourself slower. Say, bud, it's okay. You don't have to go to sleep completely right now. Just let your toes go to sleep. Let your ankles go to sleep and so on. You talk slower and the genie will fall asleep. Right? Well, there's some skills that you might enjoy. One of them is how to calm your mind. Now, it seems if we are our mind and we're completely, we've lost it, we got road rage or we're upset or we're depressed, whatever, uh, it would be really handy if you could skillfully 
learn how to control it, yes, or calm it at least. Well, there's three basic ways, very quickly, there's a strategy that you might find useful. One we already did, for example, which was to first make yourself comfortable, right? Let's say you're in the church about to pray or you're uh, out in the street and you're angry or you're depressed or whatever. The first thing you might do is to make sure yourself, is your body's comfortable. Otherwise, all you'll do is be concerned about your leg or your shoulder that's hurting. So the first thing is just to make yourself physically comfortable. For example, you might just move your mind down to your feet, check your feet to make sure your feet are relaxed. Right? Just relax your feet. Then you'd very skillfully, very intelligently relax your legs. Right? Then check your hips and stomach, make sure they're relaxed. Your arms and shoulders, especially your fingers, let your fingers relax. They're very sensitive, so relax your fingers. Your neck and your head. Right? So the first thing is to relax the body. The second thing to relax, oddly enough, is your jaw. If your jaw is relaxed, the body's relaxed. This comes out of professional sports, which I have some experience in. You'll notice if your jaw is tight, the rest of your body is tight. The jaw is the very first thing to get tense. Uh, the next time you happen to have a chance to see like a 100-yard dash on television and they do the replay, watch the jaws of the runners. Their jaws will be bouncing. You've got to stay loose, especially your jaw, when you're doing athletics. Your jaw is the key. If you tighten your jaw up, like clench your teeth to try hard, your, your performance just drops dramatically. So the next thing, make sure your jaw is relaxed. Just uh, stretch your mouth out a little bit, relax your jaw, kind of try to relax your tongue and your teeth, that whole thing, but get your jaw relaxed. That's the second thing. Because when your jaw is relaxed, the body will start to relax even more. So the jaw is the key to the body. The next thing, the third thing, comes out of the ancient Hindu Vedas, a very ancient, ancient teaching. And this is the awareness that the breath controls the mind. Now, when I first read that, I went, come on, I didn't waste getting a PhD to find out the breath controls the mind. This is nuts. But the idea here is don't believe anything you hear on this show, but to test it. Find out, is it true? Is it useful? Can I use this somehow? So on this, I'm suggesting to you that your breath controls, your mind go, now wait a minute, let's, let's hear more about this. Well, they make the argument, if you think back to a time when you were calm and peaceful, you're breathing slow, yes? Think back to a time when you're angry or upset. Notice you're breathing fast. What the breath does, the mind does. What the mind does, the breath does. Well, so what? Well, I want to challenge you today and suggest to you, you cannot be angry and breathe slow at the same time. Can't do it. So, if you have the privilege of being angry this week, try to stay angry. Try to keep it up. But breathe slow at the same time. And watch what happens. You start breathing slow and anger just slowly disappears. It's like the horse of anger that takes off the Hindu yogi says, don't bother to try and control the mind. Too late. Too late. Control your breathing. So that horse of anger is just taken off. Slow your breathing. That horse of anger will turn around, come back to you, and lay down at your feet. The breath controls the mind. Again, don't believe it. Work with it. Test it. Find out if it's useful. So, let's say you have an oral presentation here coming up pretty soon. You stand up, you know, waiting to do your presentation. The first thing you do is make yourself comfortable. So if you're sitting there, it's easier. If you're standing there, try to relax as best you can physically. Check your body, make sure you relax, right? Second thing, while you're standing there waiting to be introduced, you relax your jaw. Let your jaw go loose and limp, right? And third of all, slow your breathing. So as you slow your breathing, you can feel your mind start to calm down, become calm and peaceful, right? So one of the graceful ways to start learning that you are not your mind, but you have one, is to notice how I can start to control it when it gets out of focus, when I lose it sometimes. Because any fool can be angry, that's easy. Any fool can start a fight, that's easy. It takes some skill 
and intelligence to be peaceful. And one of the strategies is to learn how to do these three steps. Make yourself comfortable, relax your jaw, slow your breathing, and let everything just let it go for a while. For a while, the only thing that might exist for you while you slow your breathing is your chest rising and falling, and rising and falling. And you can let anger just disappear. Same thing could be several other emotions too, but right now, just using that one, those three levels, those three ways to calm the mind are one of the quick ways you can begin to calm the mind and learn how to have a chance to make more intelligent choices rather than do something out of anger that later on creates a real snarl in your life. So, just might consider those things. Three ways to calm the mind. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got boggled to a certain degree. And as we go through these uh, topics from time to time, we'll cover other things like the seven ways to direct the mind, or the two powers of mind, or other things you might find interesting as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the show. Hope you enjoyed Mind Boggles. And until next time, take care of yourself and see if you can do something nice for somebody this week.